So I'm here with Jackson, M3, Fantonda, Chalke. 22, 1 and 2. Very impressive record on what's been an amazing career for you. How are you feeling right now? Hey, my man, I feel very great. You know, at 37 years, I'm still going strong. You know, God is good, you know. Oh, sometimes I'm, I'm surprised of myself for uh, uh, what abilities I still have, you know. But uh, all in all, I'm happy. So there were lots of talks that Kotana was going to give you a really good fight. How do you think he did on the day? No, he gave me a good fight. Uh, it was tough. I didn't think uh, there was a time I was thinking he's going. But he did not, you know. Uh, he was there to fight, you know. One thing I like about fighting guys from Eastern Cape is that when you give them the chance to fight for a title, they prepare very well, they come prepared. So he was well prepared physically and mentally, you know. But uh, I broke him down, you know. And with the experience that I have uh, and the heart that I had today, there was no way that he was going to win. I had a bigger heart. So you actually fought very well with uh, good body work, good forward movement. Was that your uh, and uh, Coach Damien's game plan going in, into the fight? Uh, you know, when you're fighting uh, these young guys, uh, the game plan is to break them down, you know. Uh, championships level, you know, that's what uh, separates uh, the boys from the men, you know. That's what happened. So, uh, moving on, is there a possibility you can, you'll fight um, Kafu in the next fight? No, that one, I don't know. It's up to their promoters. But uh, I'm keen, you know, I want to fight him. You know, that's unfinished business. Uh, I, I don't want to call out to anyone now because when I say I want to fight uh, someone and then make, people make it sound like I'm calling someone out, you know. I'm not calling anyone out, you know. Kafu, uh, he knows. Him and his uh, promoter said uh, they wanted a rematch. I'm still here. If they want me to move up, I'll move up. I'll still go to Junior Bantam. I'll still beat him there. So how do you rate yourself out of 10 and tell us why? Uh, I rate myself. Uh, I won't be able to rate myself. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't rate myself, my man. You know, if, 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 if you perform... Uh, as, a, as, a, as a sportsman in all, all, all the sports, you know, you have to wait for people to tell you. People must rate you, not you rate yourself. But uh, in my heart, I'm happy with my performance, you know. But I can't rate my performance. Maybe if I looked at, look at the fight, uh, I'll rate my performance, you know. But uh, for now, I can't rate it. So what was your preparation going into this fight? How is it like? Hey, my, man, my preparations are very hectic, you know, like I told Hayden the other day when he was interviewing me that uh, fighting for me is the easiest part, but the hardest part is the preparations. I have to dig deep, you know, must remember I'm also working, you know, it's not just boxing, you know, still have to put uh, food on the table. I don't fight every month, you know, so uh, preparations are always hard. There's no shortcuts. Yeah. So you yeah, are at 37 years old, where do you see yourself going in the next few years? In the next few years, man, I'd love I'll, to... Let me just put a smile on your face tonight. <laughs> Is that you sending the message or they send it to you? They send it to me. Yeah, my man, you know, it is what it is, you know. I see myself fighting for a world world title, you know, it's possible, you know, anything is possible if you believe, you know, if you keep faith, you know, that's what I do, you know. I, when I was young, I was a bit wild, you know, now I'm calm, you know, I'm calm, uh, no stress, you know, I'm always at home, uh, if I'm not at home, I'm at the gym, you know, I'll say 90% of my life I'm in the gym, 10% I'm at home, you know, I also miss my family. No, I have to maybe try to make time, spend it with my family, you know. But it is what it is. It's work, you know. Well, you asked and uh, ESPN delivered. They, they finally got you, uh, Jackson Chawuke. The You asked and ESPN finally delivered. Gotana versus Chawuke. It finally happened. Yes. Uh, it, it, it has been in the works for a while. How did you feel when you first got the news? I uh, mean, I already, when, I, when I fought uh, Mustafa, I already knew that it's going to happen. 
as I finished fighting, then the fight was like confirmed and all that, you know. I was happy, you know, ESPN, uh, very professional, they're doing uh, great things, you know, they're still going to do great things. Nice show to, to fight in, you know, well organized, you know, can't take away anything, you know. I'm happy to fight here, I'll fight here anytime. So, you thought you were going to do it in eight rounds, but it went the full 12 rounds. How was, how was that for you? It was not, not disappointing. Uh, what I wanted was the win, you know. Uh, you will not understand, you're still young. Remember, I told you, you same age as my son. In the world, you don't always get what you want. <laughs> Your father maybe always tells you that, eh? When you ask, you don't get what you want. You see that? So me, I can live with it, as long as it's a win. So you, you said you can't rate your own performance, but how would you rate Kotana's performance tonight? Uh, I'll give him a five. Five, why? For guts. So in round five, you, it was a very intriguing bout, like one of the, the, the pull, I mean, um, no, yeah, bout. It was, it was you exchanging blows and blows, you, you were throwing, and he wasn't falling, he was still there. What was going through your mind after that? That's when I thought, uh, I'm in a fight, he's, he's well prepared, you know. Then that's when I knew that uh, this is going to be like a tough fight, you know. How have you improved on like from your last test against Mustafa? Uh, I won't call Mustafa that fight a fight, you know. That's a walk over, you know. Uh, you can even count the punches I've thrown with uh, your fingers. Maybe nine punches, you see. So you won't call that a fight, you know. I wasn't breathing heavy after the fight. I was not tired, I was not sweaty. You know, I even used the same strip as I used the last fight. I didn't even wash it because it was not wet, you know. So I don't call that fight a fight, you know. It was a bonus for me, you know. I made money easy. So there is a, uh, there is a bit of a rivalry between Gauteng and uh, Eastern Cape because you know they, they, they call themselves the maker of boxing. How high do you think you've set the standard between the two? I mean, the rivalry has been going on for since amateur days and it will never end, you know. Uh, me, I'll say they must keep bringing them from Eastern Cape. For me, any flyweight from Eastern Cape is not safe. When I'm around, it's not safe, you know. They must just bring all those bombs. I don't care if it's junior bantam, junior fly, I'll take them and I'll break them. I'll put them in a, in a plastic, my man. I'll take them to Tembisa. Yeah, you know that black plastic bag? Those amateur boxers, they used to drop weight. Yeah? You know that rubbish bag? Yeah, I'll break them, break them. And then after I break them, I'll put them in the plastic, I take them to Tembisa. Oh, you see, when on my way here, I drop him there by Alexander. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you have retained your title, so how does it feel? And there's no other South African boxer for you to fight, you know, in South Africa. So what happens now to that part of yours? Hey, my man, I don't know. I just have to wait, you know. Uh, patience, faith, belief, you know. I have to wait, you know, things don't, like I said, you don't always get what you want in life, you know, but what you get, you need to use the opportunities that you have, you need to grab with both hands, you know, that's what I'm doing in my life, you know. So, we did see some familiar faces in Kotana's corner, for like the likes of former world champion Zolani Tete, his, man his manager, you know, former... They were close, close people to you, as you said earlier. How did it feel? Like, what was going through your mind when you saw them, like opposing you? Because you used to be in the same camp. Now you, now you're fighting them. Mixed emotions, my man. You know, uh, those guys. Some of them we used to live in the same yard. Used to train together. We used to prepare for fights together. Sparring partners. You know, some we used to go out together. But now. In different sides, you know, it's funny how life changes, but it is what it is. I'm just happy today I'm in the winning side, you know, but I had mixed emotions, but it's sports, you know, it's nothing personal. I've spoken to those guys, there's no grudge between me and them, so we're okay, but said that it, it has to come to this, you know, but it is what it is, my man. 
So, as we spoke about earlier, you at the end of your career, like, and you want international fights. What do you think it's going to have to take for you to get these international fights? Uh, I think it has to take. Uh, it, I have to get opportunities and put on uh, performances. You know, good performances. You know, uh, that will be that will give me to get me to get uh, good opportunities. You know, you won't just get opportunities because you're just winning fights. People overseas want to see good fights, you know, like match room, they don't just take any boxer, they look at your performances, this one will to perform, you know, you don't, they don't just take you, you know, I have to perform, you know, keep fit, stay in the gym, focus. So that being said, where to now for Jackson? Ah, for now, I just go back to the gym and go back to the drawing board, you know, I might be 37, but uh, I'm still learning, you know, I've people that are still teaching me stuff, you know, I don't know everything, you know, going back to the gym, going to learn more, you know. Any thank you, shout outs that you have to give anyone, anyone yeah, watching this? Oh, uh, he's got a guest. Guest appearance from the third, the third wheel of uh, SA Boxing Talk, it's Hayden Jones here. Uh, <laughs> Jackson, I, I, I don't know what questions they've asked you, I've literally just walked in the door now, yeah. but I mean, after that performance, Everyone's always going to say, they're going to watch you and they say, are you too old? Are you too? But you keep proving us wrong. I mean, in that instance now, and I don't know if they asked the question or not, but how do you feel? Hey, my man, like I told you the other day, I told you, the only thing that bothers me is the preparations. The fighting, I'm happy with, you know. But preparing, I have to dig deep, you know. The running, conditioning, you know. And there's no shortcuts, you know, you know, Damien. There's no shortcuts, it's like on you all the time you know but uh, the preparations is the hardest but fighting i'm okay with fighting you know i feel great you know i'm 37 i'm also surprised i was telling them you know i'm surprised like uh, the way i'm feeling you know i feel young you know or maybe it's because i'm surrounded by guys like uh, uh, who's that uh, Puzi and uh, Nkosi, you know, all those guys that I train with uh, Colombo, they're young, you know, they bring out life in you, you know, and I'm always chilled, you know, don't have to stress, you know, maybe that's why. If, if you are an athlete, you have too much stress, you won't perform. I'm just going to make a last statement at ESPN. We love to see you back. Main eventing again for a third time. Time to be on record to say that you have the most main events on ES, uh, ESPN. Obviously, at the moment, you're equal with Sibu Sisu Zingange, but uh, surely in, in time, you will surpass that. No, no, no. I think I own this show now. I must get an office <laughs> on ESPN, man. <laughs> must get an office here, bro. Yeah, thank you. And then I must match make, uh, but if I match make, then AB won't match make. No, I don't want to take AB's yeah. job. AB is my brother, he's my, he's, my, he's my brother, you know. We're from the same, uh, what you call, township. So I don't want to match make, you know. But I, I can put input there and there, you know. Are we still going to make the end the life of Chauke? Hey, I don't know about that, my man. Hey, I'm a busy man, you won't keep up. <laughs> so lastly, any thank you, shout outs that you have to give to anyone watching? Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, God, you know, he's been very good to me, you know, I won't lie, my man, you know, I've been in situations that I never thought I would survive, but I've survived, uh, I want to thank him, and then uh, I want to thank my family, and I want to thank my trainers, Anderson Kasembe, because Damien was not uh, here in the gym, he was in uh, Germany preparing with uh, Makabu, and then I want to thank uh, Damien. Uh, his management has been uh, phenomenal, you know. I'd like to thank uh, Taylor Longosi, my chief sparring partner, you know. Uh, I'd like to thank my sponsors, you know, Savega, Amdre Spons, you know, Wall Street Financial Services, Gabby's uh, Earth and Foods, you know, uh, T-Buy and Grill, you know. Those guys, they keep me going, you know. Those are the ones that keep the stress away. You know, so that I can be stress-free financially, you know, everything, you know, they go all the way, you know. I'm grateful for, for, for having them, you know, and all the people that came to support me, you know. Thank you so much, you know, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks, man.